IFC Films has two incredible movies releasing here in the States in the next month or so. These are The Innocents and Paris 13th District. As they're both coming out relatively soon and deserve to be talked about, I thought I'd pack my thoughts on both of these vastly different but equally fantastic films into one video. So here are my thoughts on both of them, starting with Escovote's sophomore feature, The Innocents. This is an unnerving and riveting supernatural thriller. I don't want to reveal too much of the overall plot as there are so many surprises along the way that I just don't want to ruin, so I'll say the film follows a group of children in a Norwegian apartment complex. They strike up friendships with one another, and in their time together they soon reveal mysterious abilities that they don't quite understand. I think the name Esko Vogt might sound familiar to some of you, as he is of course Joachim Trier's writing partner, co-writing every single one of Trier's feature films up to this point, including The Worst Person in the World. But Vogt is also an assured filmmaker in his own right. In 2014, he made his debut feature, Blind, which was an inventive portrait of a woman coming to terms with her blindness. That film played with subjectivity and narrative in very interesting ways, but sadly was overlooked by many people. I highly recommend checking it out, though. But Vogt is now back in the director's chair with The Innocents, and is asserting himself once more as a singular directorial talent. With this one, though, Vogt has carefully designed a film guaranteed to burrow under your skin, but not in the way some filmmakers do, by subjecting an audience to constant horrifying and gratuitous violence, Rather, the film uses sporadic, sudden bursts of violence that feel utterly cold and detached. I feel like the closest comparison to this depiction of violence in film is the work of Mikael Haneke, because like the violence in Haneke's films, Vogt denies the viewer any sort of satisfaction from the violence. It's rather a cold, completely casual, joyless kind of cruelty, and that ends up making this film much more unnerving than I ever expected. And what adds an extra level of unease to that is the fact this film is entirely from the perspective of children, and observes their capacity for evil. Surprisingly, Vogt never strays from their perspectives whatsoever, as you spend nearly each and every moment immersed in their unsettling journey. Vogt, to further immerse you in the film, once again plays with subjectivity in this, as he predominantly places his camera at the eye levels of the children and lingers there. With that, you get an interesting perspective in which the surrounding environments are towering in the frame. This brings you down to the children's level, and allows you to observe their curiosities and relationships intimately. I really think Vogt has a keen eye for imagery, and that really separates him from the crowd of uh, supernatural thrillers we get today. Overall, I've found this to be a meticulously designed film through and through, with some of the most impressive child performances I've ever seen. But beyond that, it's such a haunting study of loneliness and morality, depicting such themes in a perspective rarely used in film today. It of course won't be for everyone, but I found a lot to grab onto here, and was truly invested throughout. The Innocence will release on April 15th, and I think everyone should give it a shot. Next, I want to talk about Paris 13 District. This is renowned auteur Jacques Audillard's latest film that follows four Parisians searching for meaningful connections in a modern world. You have Emily, a horny 30-something who rents her spare room to a charming teacher named Camille, and they soon begin to have a complicated relationship. You also have Nora, played by the wonderful Noemi Merlant, who strikes up a friendship with a popular cam girl who she bears a close resemblance to. We see the lives of each of these characters begin to intersect, and they fall in and out of each other's daily lives. I think those familiar with Audillard's body of work may be listening right now and thinking that this sounds unlike anything he has ever made, and you're exactly right. But Paris 13 District does continue this trend in which Audillard continues to reinvent himself and his style with each and every film. For instance, Rust and Bone was a tragic romance tale between a whale trainer and a lonely father, Dipan was about a Sri Lankan freedom fighter seeking refuge in Paris, and The Sisters Brothers was a sprawling western with a bunch of A-list actors. And with Paris 13 District, Audillard has now made a freewheeling, French New Wave-inspired tapestry of love and longing. It's a film almost void of a traditional narrative structure, jumping from moment to moment with an aimlessness that matches the lives of these characters. The dreamy, drifting flow of the story is only elevated by the beautifully muted black-and-white cinematography and a booming score that explodes onto every scene. I think this stylistic jump to a more loose narrative could easily be attributed to Audillard collaborating with Celine Siama as we all know her films to be less about a strong narrative and more about feeling. That isn't to say the overall narrative itself is boring in any way, rather it's the complete opposite, because I found its messy jumble of relationships and moments of eroticism utterly engrossing at every turn. It also helps that the four actors at the center of this have fantastic chemistry and play off one another incredibly well. And with an ensemble piece like this especially, there can sometimes be weak links, but every actor is tremendous here, with Lucy Zhang in particular being someone that blew me away and I can't wait to see what she does next. I do think, though, that there are complaints to be had about how the characters aren't exactly profound in any way, and its many ideas aren't very nuanced at all, but regardless, I found it to be a satisfying experience that beautifully explores life in all of its moments of sadness, sexiness, and banality. 
and doing so in a singular and utterly entertaining way. I just really love that, even at this stage of his career, Audiard continues experimenting with the storytelling and style, and the new stuff he tries here will work for some and won't for others, but personally, I found a lot to appreciate. So yeah, I think this is a nice way to spend an hour 40 of your day, and you'll be able to watch this when it releases on April 15th in theaters and on VOD, so definitely give it a watch. Thanks so much for listening to me talk about these two movies that I really, really enjoyed. As you could tell, they couldn't be more different from one another, but I really wanted to talk about both of them, and this was just an easy way to condense my thoughts into one video. If you did enjoy this though, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel, and as I don't talk about all the big new releases, every little like and comment helps tremendously. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this quick little video of mine, and I hope to see you next time.